Welcome back to Chapter 8. Today we're going to look at Section 8.3 again. Um, and if you remember, 8.3 dealt with the inverse of a square matrix. Um, and just as recall, you don't have to write this stuff down as you've already done this once. But the definition of an inverse matrix says that if A, or matrix A times A inverse gives you the same thing as A inverse times A, which is I sub N, and I sub N is your identity matrix, um, then we say that A inverse is the actual inverse of matrix A. And if you recall, not all square matrices have an inverse, and non-square matrices cannot have an inverse. Also, if you recall, we said that a matrix that has an inverse is called either an invertible matrix or a non-singular matrix, and if a matrix does not have an inverse, then it's said to be singular. Now your textbook gives the definition, and this is for working problems out by hand, that says let matrix A be a square matrix of order N. If we write the N by 2N matrix that consists of the given matrix on the left, and the N by N identity matrix on the right, to obtain, and remember, those dots right here in the middle, this really means it's like an augmented matrix. So I'm going to write your coefficient matrix on one side and your identity matrix on the other side. Um, then it says, if possible, we want to row reduce matrix A to I. In other words, we want to put it in reduce row echelon form using your elementary row operations on the entire matrix. So that means anything I do to um, the matrix A side, I must also do on the identity matrix side then the result will give us the identity matrix on the left-hand side and your inverse matrix on the right-hand side. If you cannot reduce the left-hand side down to the identity matrix, then we say A is not invertible. And again, you can always check your work by multiplying A times A inverse and the inverse of A times A, and you should always get your identity matrix. Now sometimes when we adjoin a matrix um, on the left hand side and our identity matrix on the other side, we might get something, um, and this is just an example, but you might get something that looks like, if I have a 2 by 2, let's just say I have something like 1, 4, negative 1, negative 3, then I'm going to show this um, as a what we call a double odd a doubly augmented matrix and I'm just going to put my identity matrix over on this side and if you recall the identity matrix because I have a 2 by 2 here is going to be 1 0 and 0 1 and then what's going to happen is I'm going to do elementary row operations on this part but anything I do over here I'm also going to have to deal with over here but my goal is to get this whole side here in a reduced row echelon form so that I can find out what my inverse is. And that's actually what we're going to do in our next example. For our only example um, in this section, we are going to find the inverse of matrix A. Now if you note, matrix A is a 3 by 3. I have three rows that run this way, and I have my three columns. Okay, it is a square matrix, so that I know I can attempt to do this. And based on what we just said, I'm going to write my doubly augmented matrix as 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 6, negative 2, negative 3. And I'm going to join that with the identity matrix, which is going to be 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So this here is my doubly augmented matrix. And now I'm going to go about simplifying this and getting this side here in my row echelon form. Well, I see that my first equation looks good because I have this leading coefficient of 1. Now I need to look at this second equation here. So let me rewrite. I can leave my first equation the same, which is 1, negative 1, 0, equals 1, 0, 0. Now I need to eliminate this one here. And to do that, I'm going to add, 
Now I'm going to multiply my R1 equation by a negative 1 and add it to my R2. So I'm going to go negative R1 plus R2. So negative R1 is going to give me a negative 1, positive 1, 0 equals negative 1, 0, 0. And I'm going to add that to 1, 0, negative 1, and then 0, 1, 0. I apologize, this isn't showing up on the end there. When I add these up, I get 0, 1, negative 1 equals negative 1, 1, 0. So I'm going to write that in over here. So I have 0, oops, sorry, 0, 1. negative 1 and negative 1, 1, 0. And now I need to cancel out this 6 here. So I'm going to do that by going negative 6 R1 plus R3. So I have negative 6, positive 6, 0. And that's going to give me negative 6, 0, 0. And I'm going to add that to my third row, which is 6, negative 2, negative 3, and 0, 0, 1. When I do that, I get 0, 4, negative 3, negative 6, 0, and 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write those in. 0, 4, negative 3 negative 6, 0, and 1. I'm going to close my matrix. So I see that I'm at least getting a step closer. I now have a 0 here. but Actually, I have two zeros below that first leading 1. I have a leading 1 of here in my second row. And now I say I need to get rid of this 4 here. To get rid of that 4, I'm going to have 1, negative 1, 0 equals 1, 0, 0. I have 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0. I want to get rid of this 4 here. So if I multiply over R2 by a negative 4 R2 and add that to R3, I end up with, let me do the work off to the side here, so negative 4 times 1, I'm going to end up with 0. Negative 4. Um, negative 4 times a negative 1 is going to give me a positive 4. Then I have 4, negative 4, and 0. And I'm adding that to R3, which is 0, 4, negative 3, negative 6, 0, and 1. So when I add these, I end up with 0, 0, 1 equals negative 2, negative 4, and 1. So I apologize, this is going off my screen. So let's just rewrite that over here. So I get 0, 0, 1, and negative 2, negative 4, 1. Now I want to get this in the reduce, or this side here, oops, sorry, I want to get this side over here in the reduced row echelon form. So to do that, I need to get rid of this negative 1 and this negative 1 so that I have zeros above this leading one zeros above and below this zero, um, leading one, and I've already got zeros below that leading one. So, to eliminate this negative one, I see that I can add these two rows here together and create a new row one, and I see that if I add row two and row three together, I'm going to get a new row two, and I should have a zero there. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So, R1 plus R2 is going to give me 1, 0, negative 1, 
zero, one, zero. We said that we're going to eliminate this negative one. I can add R2 to R3. And when I do that, I get 0, 1, 0 equals negative 3, negative 3, 1. And row 3 I already looked good because that was 0, 0, 1 equals negative 2, negative 4, 1. Now the only thing that's keeping me from being in reduced row echelon form is this negative one here, and I'm going to get rid of that <clears throat> Excuse me, by adding this row, or my row one, oops, sorry, to my row three. So let me erase this out here. So if I add row one to row three, I'm going to generate a new R1. So R1 plus R3 is going to give me 1, 0, 0 equals 0, oops, I'm sorry, I'm adding row 1 to row 3. So I have 0 plus a negative 2, which is going to give me a negative 2. 1 plus a negative 4 is a negative 3, and 0 plus 1 is 1. My row 2 looked good at 0, 1, 0 equals negative 3, negative 3, 1. And row 3 looked good with 0, 0, 1 equals negative 2, negative 4, and 1. So now, because I was able to get this side here in a reduced row echelon form, what I've just done is I have created my identity matrix here. So this here is my I sub N or identity matrix. And this matrix over here is my inverse matrix of A. And you can verify this on your calculator, but the inverse of matrix A, which we were given up here in the very beginning, right here, is actually equal to this matrix that we found right here. If you have any questions, please let me know. And for those of you that wanted a catchy ending, um, I've got one for you. From the book, I Didn't Know That by Carlin Evans, the term piggyback was another word that was slurred over time. It says the correct word for carrying someone upon your back was actually pick a back. And it was first used to describe an adult carrying a child. Pick a back evolved to its current spelling and pronunciation today of piggyback. So there you go. If you didn't learn something about matrices, at least you hope, I hope you uh, learned out about the word piggyback. We'll see you guys in class.